guys, Tanya and Rich here, and today we're gonna go over some of the phrases that you shared with us. And the first phrase is pin something down, which means finding the exact detail of something. For example, researchers have not pinned the COVID virus down yet. That was a very good explanation and a really good example. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, good job, Chitra. This is like when you pin something down, so you try to discover the exact details. But what about when you pin somebody down? It means something different, right? Yeah, it would be like a physical definition. So physically pinning someone down, getting them to the ground and staying on top of them. Keep in mind, guys, phrasal verbs have multiple meanings. So that's why they're so tricky. And that's why we have the whole course about phrasal verbs. <laughs> if you guys are interested, the link is in my bio. Next phrase, play something by ear. Very good idiom. And I would say a pretty common one, right? Yeah, you hear it a lot. Hey, what do you want to do this weekend? Should we go camping? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I think it might rain though. Really? Well, let's just play it by ear. We'll see what's the weather like. Yeah, that sounds good. So when you decide to play it by ear, you don't really make any decision in advance. You just want to wait and decide later. It depends on the way things develop. Yeah, I would say another expression that would be very similar is like wait and see. Yeah, wait and see. All right, next one, cut back. It's a phrasal verb, which means to reduce. You must cut back your expenses. Cher, what if you have the car and I need to go shopping? We're gonna cut back on shopping too. There is another phrasal verb that means the same thing, cut down. So when you cut back or cut down on something, it means you want to reduce an amount of something. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that you feel like you need to cut down on? Eating out, probably. Next one. Bear the brunt of something means to suffer the main part of force of something. So you can say to bear the brunt of something or to take or suffer the brunt of something. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, since the coronavirus, many small businesses have had to bear the brunt of the economic impact. So basically when uh, something bad happens, like an oh, unpleasant situation, and if you take uh, the brunt of it, it means that you suffer the most or you have more problems than anyone else. Next one, uh, bland food, which means tasteless food, which has no flavor. For example, when you make oatmeal and you don't put any salt or sugar or any butter, so it kind of tastes bland. Yeah, you hear bland food all the time. What are you saying? <laughs> I'm a bad cook. No, usually when I cook, it needs salt. Next one, to a T. Perfectly, exactly. She looks like her mom to a T. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what it means. Perfectly, exactly. And this is an informal expression. Uh, this shirt suits you to a T. <laughs> thank you very much. So which and means so does your it, dress. Oh, thank you. So yeah, so it suits perfectly. Next one, Ify. Questionable, uncertain. Smart woman. Iffy choice in men. Buying clothes online can be iffy. And another example, the weather is kind of iffy today. Let's go on our hike tomorrow. So maybe yeah. we're not sure if it's gonna rain or not. It's kind of iffy. Those are both perfect examples. You hear people talk about iffy weather a lot. Next one, spill the tea, which means tell me the gossip. I'm unfamiliar with this expression, actually. Yeah, I'm familiar with it, uh, but maybe it's not that common in America. So it's a slang phrase. T is actually a slang word for gossip. Do you know that? I did not know that. <laughs> I'm learning a lot today. Yeah, thank you for teaching us. <laughs> Spill the tea means to share, reveal, gossip. For example, hey, what happened at the party last night? I heard there was some kind of fight. Come on, spill the tea. So come on, tell me the gossip. Next one, in lieu of means instead of, which is formal. You'll hear it in a lot of business settings, like Tanya said, very formal settings generally. So, you know, maybe if a company was making a statement about their bonus structure and they said, in lieu of a flat fee, this year we're gonna go percentage-based. So would you say it like in everyday conversation? Not that common, right? It it's all, all formal. Right, I would say it, you know, maybe working with a client. Right, so still formal settings. Mm -hmm. so pay attention to the pronunciation and spelling of this word because it could be tricky. In lieu of. Next one, suck it up. <laughs> to endure a period of mental, physical hardship with no complaining. For example, will you suck it up? <laughs> so, yeah, so when you tell someone suck it up, it, you want them to stop complaining and deal with the situation. Is it kind of rude, you think? Yeah, I mean, it would definitely be something you would only say 
to someone, probably a, a relative, even then it would probably be offensive. Really, I think you would hear it from like a coach or some, somebody in the military. Someone who's tough. You know, yeah, suck exactly. it up, someone man. Someone <laughs> coaching you to suck it up, basically. Come on, gentlemen, suck it up! Suck it up! Uh, next one, piece of cake. To do something very easily. When something is a piece of cake, it's a very easy task for you. Um, what is a piece of cake for you, for example? Tying my shoes. Since last week. <laughs> We're tying your shoe. <laughs> For example, you were nervous about a quiz or a test and then it turned out to be a piece of cake. So it was way easier than you expected it to be. Next one, I screwed up. It means you do something but at the end you fail. For example, yesterday I tried to make some tasty salad for dinner but it was not good so I screwed up. <laughs> So yeah, it's another phrasal verb and very, very common. When you screw up something means you failed it or you made a mistake. For example, my husband forgot my birthday, so he screwed up and I was very angry. When did that happen? I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, so someone made a mistake and he wants to go apologize. I'm sorry, I know I screwed up. Yep. Next one, going through the looking glass. And I heard this comes from the tale Alice in Wonderland. So this phrase was actually new for both of us and I did look it up. So every time when you don't understand um, the phrase or idiom, sometimes it helps to look up the origin of this phrase or idiom. I can help you to understand it better and memorize it easily. So going through the looking glass has become a metaphor for some bizarre things, some strange things. And this phrase uh, is a reference to Lewis Carroll's novel, Alice in Wonderland, so you're right. And let's look at the word looking glass. Do you know that it's actually an old-fashioned word for a mirror? I think I did know that, yeah. Yeah, so I guess the meaning is when you look in the mirror, things are backwards. So the expression is referring to things being not quite normal. Yeah, and in his novel, Lewis Carroll created a world that was the opposite of the real world. So things were like unusual over there. It's become a metaphor right now. You can say that something is like a going through the looking glass. Maybe like when you go to different country and you can say it's like going through the looking glass. So things are so different over there, like, you know, different customs, traditions. So mm -hmm. just very unusual and strange for you. Well, I think that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for sharing all these expressions with us. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. I think Tiny and I both learn a lot every time you guys share these and we get to research them. So it's a lot of fun. It is fun. Well, also tell us which expression you like the most. Uh, share it in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, thanks. Hey, what do you want to do this weekend? Should we go camping? <laughs> <laughs> so what is a piece of cake for you? I would say writing like a short blog post. Good. <laughs>